This December, it will have been one year since the new coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 was first identified in Wuhan in China, and human civilization was never the same. Having been defeated by an invisible enemy, our lives completely upended. 2020 has just basically been the year of the coronavirus. More than any single year has been the year of, well, anything really. <laughs> We're all basically just living in the shadow of SARS-CoV-2. <laughs> But over the last 12 months, some clear risk factors for developing the more severe form of COVID-19 have emerged. These risk factors include things like old age, male sex, and the presence of pre-existing health conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and hypertension. I bet though you already knew all this and this old information isn't the reason why you decided to watch my video today. So here's the juice. Just this week, scientists from Germany and Sweden, Hugo and Savante, I will save myself the embarrassment of trying to pronounce their last names, so here are their pictures instead. Published a paper in the journal Nature where, through genome-wide association studies, they were able to identify six genes all located neatly next to one another on chromosome 3. These six genes on chromosome 3 are associated with the more severe form of COVID-19. Basically, if you have these six genes, you are significantly more likely to develop the more severe form of COVID-19 should you catch the new coronavirus and become infected. 1.6 times more likely to be specific. Approximately 50% of people from South Asia, 16% of people from Europe, and 8% of all Americans have these six genes. And scientists are pretty sure we got these genes from our extinct Neanderthal cousins who we may have gotten just a tad bit too involved with uh, 50,000 years ago. Hmm, why am I trying to sugarcoat this? Yeah, we totally interbred with a different species, and most of you guys watching this video today will be carrying some Neanderthal DNA inside of you. So stay tuned and you'll find out all about Neanderthals and how their genes got into our DNA, how genome-wide association studies work, and how the scientists figured out that these genes actually came from our Neanderthal cousins. At the end of the video, I'll also mention a few health conditions that are present today that we think are a result of this interbreeding with Neanderthals, so stay tuned for that. But before we begin, let me bore you a little with a tiny bit about Dr. Tell Me Why, just in case you happen to be new here and haven't subscribed yet. Dr. Tell Me Why is a health education YouTube channel where I make medical scientific content with some mediocre humor mixed in there somewhere for you guys, my awesome YouTube squad, to enjoy. So if this sounds like something that you want to see more of on YouTube, or if you just want to join my YouTube squad for whatever reason, then you should definitely subscribe. You won't regret it, or maybe you will, but if you do, you can always unsubscribe at a later date in the future, I suppose. So who exactly were the Neanderthals? The Neanderthals are an extinct hominin who split from the ancestors of modern humans almost 550,000 years ago. The Neanderthals went on to conquer most of Europe and Asia, but when our ancestors emerged from Africa, they quickly put an end to that by killing off most of the Neanderthals, who are believed to have been more peace-loving and cooperative than us humans or us homo sapiens ever were. And in between all the killing, we also managed to find the time to interbreed with them, eventually coming to carry some of their genetic information in our very own DNA. Don't you just love it when humans are this productive? <laughs> in fact, we believe that our ancestors interbred with Neanderthals not once, but in two distinct ways. The first time was soon after we emerged from Africa in the Middle East, and the second time somewhere in Central Asia. Which explains why people from different ethnic backgrounds have different amounts of Neanderthal genes in their DNA. It all depends on whether your ancestors interbred once or twice. Or none at all. Africans, for example, whose ancestors never left Africa, have very little Neanderthal genetics in their DNA. Because why would they? The first interbreeding cycle happened in the Middle East after the would-be Europeans and Asians split off deciding to go see more of the big wide world. So how do these genome-wide association studies work? 
Well, the scientists Hugo Zeberg and Savante Papo took DNA samples from 3,199 hospitalized COVID-19 patients, people whose condition was bad enough it warranted hospitalization. They then analyzed their DNA samples, comparing their small bank of genetic information belonging to COVID-19 patients who were hospitalized to almost 900,000 control specimens. And when they put their data on a fancy Manhattan plot, what they found was a pattern or a clear genetic distinction between the control group and the patients who were in hospital because of COVID-19. And these differences, well, they neatly lined up as the six genes they went on to identify on chromosome 3. Now, these six genes are relatively common in Neanderthal fossils and have remained largely intact, lining up together in the same order. This would all suggest that these genes arrived from our Neanderthal cousins and not from a common ancestors that humans and Neanderthals would have shared almost 600,000 years ago. If it had arrived from that common ancestor, you would expect to see the genes be a lot more fragmented than they actually are. The degree of fragmentation is actually suggestive of an arrival date of around 50,000 years ago, which you know just happens to be around the same time that we were interbreeding with Neanderthals. And killing them, yeah, we did that too. I mean, I don't really know which is worse. Please tell me in the comments below which you think is worse. I suppose humans still do kill other humans, so... I mean, nothing's really changed since then. So what does all this translate to in the real world? What are the repercussions of these six genes on chromosome 3? Well, a recent study carried out in the UK found that people of Bangladeshi origin were around two times more likely to die of COVID-19 than the general population was. People of Bangladeshi origin are South Asian, meaning that their ancestors probably interbred twice over with Neanderthals, meaning that they are significantly more likely to carry these six genes on chromosome 3 than the general UK population. It could also explain why Africa has not suffered as much as the rest of the world has, because remember, Africans have very little or no Neanderthal genes in their DNA. And actually, it's suggested that the differences in Neanderthal genes that we see in different humans today could explain some of the ethnic differences that exist between humans. Like why East Asians have slightly larger brains than Europeans that are better at perception than European brains but have to work harder at processing language. Neanderthals are thought to have had better perception but poorer language skills. These Neanderthal genes are thought to have been vital for early human survival, giving them a genetic shortcut and thus allowing them to survive in the cooler climates of Europe and Asia. Nowadays though, these genes are thought to increase the risk of developing a host of health conditions like diabetes and depression. It's also believed that humans contracted HPV-16, human papilloma virus, a virus that's responsible for mouth and cervical cancer off of Neanderthals off of Neanderthals, yeah, off of Neanderthals, through contact with Neanderthals, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <sighs> I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, if you did, please give it a like so that YouTube could recommend this video to more people. If there was something that you wanted explaining or clarifying, then please leave a comment below and I promise I will get back to you. I have so few subscribers that I get back to everyone. <laughs> the great benefits of being a small channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so already. I love you all, but I will love you even more if you subscribe. And if you subscribe, I promise to give you top tips on living a healthier life, tell you about all these fascinating medical conditions, and present to you the latest groundbreaking medical research, just like I did today. Thank you guys, love you all to bits, and see you all next Saturday.